Did you know there's over 100 healthy foods that are rich in prebiotics, which can feed your intestinal bacteria? And if we organize these foods by categorical prebiotic type, we can easily then go to select a few foods from each category, therefore ensuring our gut has the healthiest and broadest selection of prebiotics. What are prebiotics doing? What's the mechanism through which prebiotics exert some of their healthy benefits? Well, they've been shown to reduce inflammation and correspondingly to increase antioxidants. Short chain fatty acid production is also bolstered by the consumption of prebiotics. And short chain fatty acids function as the fuel for what's known as enterocytes or the lining cells of your gut. Prebiotics are consumed by intestinal bacteria and then they release short chain fatty acids. And these short chain fatty acids, again, function as fuel for those enterocytes or the cells that line your gut. Corresponding to this, prebiotics have shown the ability to help improve or repair intestinal permeability or leaky gut. And also, again, they can increase levels of healthy bacteria and additionally may reduce DNA damage and regulate immunity. So a number of health benefits vectored or conferred by prebiotic consumption. However, there's also a point at which you can overdo it with prebiotics, and if so, this can actually elicit some negative symptoms. So we'll provide you a bird's eye list overview of these foods, making it easy for you to integrate them into your diet, while simultaneously we'll cover a few warning signs that you might be overdoing it with prebiotics. This is Dr. Michael Ruscio. Let's jump in. Why are prebiotics important? What are the health benefits? Well, there's been a number of benefits, thankfully, that have been shown via the healthy consumption of prebiotics. These include the improvement of constipation, also reduced diverticulitis or inflammation in the lining of the colon, a reduction in colon cancer risk, although not all data here agree, and beyond your gut, improvements in mood, namely anxiety, depression, and some early emergent evidence that prebiotic consumption can improve cognition. Also, perhaps the most powerful impact of prebiotics has been demonstrated via the lowering of blood sugar. So this is actually quite interesting. And the improvement in cholesterol levels has also been documented. The ability to prevent migraines and also the ability to improve fatty liver disease, likely via what's known as the gut-liver connection. And let's go into the food list so that you can understand what foods are rich in prebiotics and start integrating some of these into your diet. The rules for how to do this are not exact. Simply aim to eat the widest array possible from our food list, and also try to include a variety of colors. The Journal of Parental and Enteral Nutrition has a nice framework for this, where they break down prebiotics into various categorical types, including fructose, lactose, fructans, mannitol, sorbitol, and galactans. Now that may sound like a lot, but once we put it out into this kind of bird's eye overview list, you can go through the simple exercise of looking at this food list and saying, okay, let me select a few foods from each one of these categories. Fructose, probably as the name implies, found in some fruits like apples, boysenberries, mangoes, pears. Also certain vegetables like asparagus, and artichokes. Lactose, also as the name would imply, is found in a variety of dairy sources. Now, some are lactose intolerant, so if you know that you don't digest lactose well, then I wouldn't force dairy upon yourself for obvious reasons. That being said, there have been a number of clinical trials that have found that probiotics, not prebiotics, but supplementation with probiotics can improve lactose tolerance, so that's just something to think about. And Fructans. Many foods have fructans, including watermelon, nectarines, and also vegetables, artichokes, garlic, leeks, onions, and shallots. And also, fructans are found in a number of grains, cereals, nuts, legumes, and even some inulin, which is found in many prebiotic supplements. 
And to put mannitol and sorbitol on the list, again, fruits like watermelon, apples, peaches, nectarines, vegetables, cauliflower, mushrooms, and chickpeas, legumes, beans, and lentils. And finally, to round this out, we should mention resistant starch, which is a type of starch that is, as the name implies, resistant to small intestinal digestion. Therefore, this starch makes its way into the colon where intestinal bacteria can feed on it. And there are three types here. And essentially, if you consume grains, seeds, or legumes, you'll get type one. And then if you consume raw potatoes and things like bananas, you'll get type two. If you cook and cool the potatoes, bananas, and things like rice, you'll get type three. So that's the overview. And again, there's not an exact science. I wouldn't make this a a difficult and arduous task, but rather look at your diet, look at this food list, and try to implement a smattering of each type of prebiotic into your diet, that will give you a broad and healthy prebiotic intake. And if this has been helpful, please click on the link below to receive a free copy of our guide so as to make it very easy for you to look at this list and over time integrate these progressively into your diet. And again, in recap, this is not an exact science try to get a smattering of these into your diet and include a variety of colors. What about warning signs? You can overdo it with prebiotics. So we should briefly cover what some of the warning signs are. What's ironic here is some of the same symptoms that prebiotics can improve, they can also provoke or worsen if your intake is too high. Kind of like exercise. No exercise is bad, but too much exercise can cause injury and fatigue. The specific symptomatic signs that you could be overdoing it with prebiotics include bloating and gas, diarrhea, constipation, or acid reflux, insomnia, fatigue, and even mood swings are possible. The most problematic foods seem to be garlic and onions, so just something to keep in mind. And what do you do if you do experience some of these warning signs? Well, firstly, don't force it. In the clinic, sometimes we'll see individuals who have almost been force feeding themselves prebiotics, having negative symptoms. And then they say, well, geez, doc, I just heard about how healthy they are. So I keep eating them, even though I'm having this elicitation of negative symptoms. So don't force it. If you're having reactions, pull back and reduce your intake. If that doesn't help, you may want to consider going in the opposite direction and do two to three weeks on a low FODMAP diet, which reduces prebiotic intake, and that can actually allow the gut microbiota to reset and can reduce symptoms and allow healing for some. It really depends on what direction does your microbiota need to go. Some benefit from feeding, and some actually benefit from pruning. So keep that in mind in attempts to find the diet that works best for you and not necessarily just blindly try to eat one way based upon a mechanism or because you're trying to improve your prebiotics. Your symptoms are really the most important thing for us to listen to in fine-tuning your diet. So in close, I hope this provides you an accessible method to increase your consumption of prebiotic-rich foods and improve awareness of the warning signs in case you overdo it, because this does happen. And if this has been helpful, please like and subscribe if you'd like to learn more about improving your gut health. This is Dr. Ruscio, and I hope that helps.